Hello there. Today's Easter Sunday. Happy Easter, everybody. And everything is closed. Everything is closed. It's hard to find food. So here's my lunch. Uh, one is called Tahiti Squeeze. One is called Green Hornet. And the last one is... Uh, no, Green Hornet is this one. And this one is a Red Sunrise. Uh, which can be a dangerous juice to drink right now. But what do you do? So basically this is uh, Oakville. I drove my car, still with the check engine light, but drives great, except I notice, okay, which one is squeeze juice? I mean, squirrel, or squirrel, tahiti squeeze, because that one is basically fruit, fruit juice. But I decided to give my body a break today from all those Easter celebrations, so no alcohol today. man this is so tasty yeah it's strawberries i think strawberries apple yeah and there's a mall there's a big mall it's called burlington mall right next to my hotel like five minutes away and i was there the other day and there's um, another company this is called booster juice right the franchise i think they're in the states as well But over there they have uh, another franchise called Freshly Squeezed. And of course, mostly these guys are selling this super complicated, you know, smoothies that cost like 20 bucks. I always go just for the freshly squeezed juice, uh, usually veg vegetable, like that's what these other two are, because they have, they have ginger, they have beets, you know, they have celery. It's very like nice cleansing juice, you know, just for give the body a break. But everything is closed. It's funny. I, I thought Sunday would be. I thought Sunday would be. Uh, open I, I didn't even leave my hotel this morning because they have a nice uh, hot breakfast you know there was some eggs and sausage and uh, coffee and then I stayed in my room and I started flipping through the channels and I ran you know that home uh, what is called homemade channel about you know renovations and real estate so now today Sunday here in Burlington Ontario They were running a bunch of episodes of this uh, TV from uh, TV show about a couple in North Carolina. And it's called 50-50 Flip. And it's like amazing. Each episode, it's one project or one house that they buy, rebuild, and it's so beautiful. And they show you all the all the details, how they do it. You know, it's so captivating, man. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't tear myself away you know because I was in real estate a long time ago right that's how I made the uh, 20 grand US well I made more but then of course I wasted all that on on expensive nuts and juice and uh, flights to Europe but I still remember when I came to Canada in 97 i had 20,000 us which at that time was equal to 30,000 canadian and i had no idea about all these uh, stocks and the mutual funds and when i opened an account my first account in canada was a td bank my favorite bank because um, when i was in russia believe it or not i was trying to contact them because i needed to open an account because that was one of the conditions of the getting the Canadian visa. It was that you have to have five thousand dollars Canadian or U.S. in a in a foreign bank. Which, funny enough, I mentioned this before. 
which was not allowed at that time <laughs> you needed to have like a, a russian cannot open an account overseas unless you have a blessing of the central bank of russia so you have to go and get some kind of a fill out an application or something i don't know basically if you're just a regular guy jack in the street you're not supposed to have an account overseas but you know i was moving this was a condition they said yeah you must show us proof of having five thousand because that was like a bare minimum you know to survive for the first couple of months right before you find a job and so i remember i contacted all the major banks in canada which are only four bank of montreal scotia bank royal bank rbc and uh what's the other one there's another one i never had an account with those guys and the only one that answered me and nobody from russia from 5,000 miles away was td bank they even sent me an application but i don't think they they were able to open an account because you have to do it in person but i still remember so that was my favorite bank All right, one down to you go. So like I said, that's my lunch. Why I mentioned the bank? Because I was talking about real estate. Sorry for my making that childish noise. Okay, what do you guys think? Green Hornet or Red Sunrise? Well, let's leave Red Sunrise for the, for the conclusion of this blockbuster. And so yeah, so they have a, this video about this couple and it's it's so interesting, just brings back some, brings back some memories, you know, about real estate. I really, really love real estate and then you start, you start watching. So yeah, this is, uh, what did they say? Green Hornet. You start watching and you think, hey, anybody can do this, right? But then they run into all these problems, you know, rotten floors underneath that you cannot see, right? There's so much and they have, the, they have an entire team. It's not just like one guy, basically, it's a husband and wife. But they have a company. They have a, they have a company of uh, a group of, I think, what, four people acquisitions manager basically the scout that finds these uh, rundown properties that they can buy cheap then they have a marketing guy that deals with advertising and stuff like that then they have the office manager of course and they also have the most important probably the interior designer and so these guys go in they evaluate the house, see if they can flip it in 50 days, spending less than 50k in renovations. And then they do their magic and like man, in the in the end, like just the last project they were they were showing in a bad neighborhood that's kind of like slowly you know getting better. And the first day the first day somebody broke in uh, when they just started the renovations but they didn't steal uh, anything inside because there was not nothing much, nothing to steal it was all garbage in there uh, but they bashed in the door the back door and they had to fix it so man but it, again in the states it's unbelievable so these guys are buying a house for like 100 grand they're putting in uh, 40,000 in renovations and they sold it for 208,000 but I mean but they have five people working for them right but just the prices are unbelievable so this is North Carolina and I'm in Oakville Ontario over here a typical house will be a couple of million Canadian you know easy you cannot buy anything for hundred thousand dollars here unless I don't know it's a it's an outdoor house you know outhouse maybe you can buy for hundred thousand with a half an acre just prices in the states are uh, so attractive, you know. 
anyway so today is sunday my last last day of my easter vacation so tomorrow i'm going back to cambridge so i need to fix the car check engine light and then the brakes uh, thanks for a couple of knowledgeable guys about the suggestion to check the brake booster i did find the uh, i think one of the cables like there's an electric cable in there it was probably not fully inserted and so i when i plugged it and replugged it the brakes came back on but i still gonna ask the guy at the shop uh, ask him to to uh, recheck that entire area because probably the guy was in a rush maybe there's some other hose somewhere is loose you know so check engine light check the brakes again and i still want to sorry i want to pay them i'll pay them i don't like you know i keep thinking about that tiny gap between the active exhaust valve and the undercarriage of the car it just on this side i can put my finger in it was like you know i don't know 12 13 millimeters space but on this side you can barely put the straw in and even then the straw would be flattened it's like i don't know three millimeters you know four millimeters it's really what if it settles down actually now i'm gonna ask him because i've been driving around i'll when i put it on the hoist i say okay guys please report what the gap is is it the same as it was before or is it became smaller or bigger and then i still wanna i said i'll pay you i'll pay you just all they have to do is uh, undo two clamps and take off those rubber hangers in the back and they have to cut they have to cut uh, part of the pipe you know but basically they connect like this right like the new meat pipes coming from here with headers and then the the rear so it's like a male female connection and all they can do is they can cut this uh like i don't know half an inch one inch so this will go further or closer to the front and so that will remove like that pipe that right now i mean how is it it's sitting like this so like this you know because there's a there's some kind of a, a lever in there and it sits like this so once it goes forward you know this active valve when we push this the cat back forward it's gonna clear this because it's not like entire like this like ceiling you know it's like one lever in there so you just need to go forward slightly and it'll it'll dramatically increase the the gap and then of course last but not least i haven't heard from the truck shop i told them take their time i said i'll be back tuesday yeah and of course monday before i go back actually first i have to go to uh, toronto and do the application of my passport and uh, and then drive back yeah and the truck uh, somebody was asking why the truck is in the shop well it was almost like it was not the truck it was mostly the trailer remember those uh the problem with the flashing lights that appeared after this bad winter all my flashing lights you know those uh strobe lights all the strobe lights stopped working they don't work on the booster they don't work on the trailer tandem they don't work on any flip axle i don't know it's probably all corroded in there and uh, so i said guys i you know i actually most often you don't it's not required by law the only place i saw on the permit where it's required is uh, when you're long right when you have a booster and you're over 100 feet long i know in michigan michigan just says must have lights on the back of the trailer and so if you don't have them you can get a ticket but funny they don't say anything about the overhead light it's so each state is different each province is different uh for example in new york you must have the light on top of the truck but they don't say anything about the back of the trailer but most guys run together with them right so on on the tractor on the roof and it just looks nice you know and it's and also it's uh functional because it it warns people coming from the back at 100 miles an hour uh, that you're not you know 
you're not fooling around you have a serious load like something big and oversized i always put i always turn those on when i when i'm running like these over overhead flashing lights are super useful when you're on a two-lane road you know and people coming from this side um but when you're even when you're on the freeway actually those lights i found they help to warn people on the ramps you know like i'm driving like this on the curb lane and somebody tries to jump into me or in front of me from the ramp and if you have the flashing lights it gives him a warning that you're wide right so maybe either go ahead of me or or break and go behind me uh, but other than that when you're on the freeway right quite often those lights on the truck are blocked by the load if you have a big excavator people from the back if it's a freeway right there's no oncoming traffic so people from the back they cannot see the the flashing lights on the roof they can only see flashing lights on the trailer and so that was the major reason i put the truck into the shop i said yeah flashing lights and then i checked my records and it looks like it's been a while since i greased the trailer and so i asked him to grease the, the all units the entire trailer all the flip axles the booster and uh, and then the last thing on the truck the only thing on the truck i said please check the aiming of headlights because it looks like when i'm when i was driving at night it looks like one of the headlights was you know not aligned it was showing me more in the ditch you know because at night it's clearly visible right that something is off uh, and then sometimes I, I hear some hissing air you know coming out somewhere from behind the behind the cab maybe just the leveling valve because there's uh there's uh like small airbags there under the under the truck sometimes i hear that noise sometimes i don't but i said check for any air leaks on the truck and that's what it's doing and so far i think i talked to maybe two people last week about some loads but so far nothing is lined up so and no news of my accordion i have no idea when i'm gonna get my new accordion but once i get it i'll do a video unboxing video i know people love watching that uh, when you deal with you know new gadgets or instruments so this is going to be a super nice concert level italian made in italy no russian components whatsoever it's from coming from dino buffetti and it's coming to my dealer who is actually located not too far from my hotel in burlington ontario and i keep asking him you know maybe you, you can send him a inquiry he says no italians uh, take that as a offense if you try to push them you know hurry them they they like to take their time he says they will give me one week one week's notice when the accordion is coming he says that's it you cannot bother them <laughs> so italians are very touchy touchy feely in in this sense and i'm not learning italian anymore if you remember i thought i would be going i asked somebody one of these dealers when i didn't yet uh, order it from this guy because i know he's a legitimate dealer so the accordion will come here but I remember when i was dealing with another guy i was asking them if it's possible if i fly over to italy myself and pick it up because you know as a canadian i don't need a visa to to visit any countries in uh, europe which is pretty cool you know so no visa like i know russians in russia there or ukraine they need a schengen visa schengen that's the agreement for all these uh, schengen agreement countries which is all europe so they have to buy that but then once they have that visa it's good for all countries in europe like you know you can go to france uh, uk you know italy spain but for us canadians that's what i like no visa you know it's a visa free travel and so i thought hey i never been to italy you know i love the food uh i love the language and i thought that's why you know i i signed up for that course online trying to learn some basics but they don't give you any grammar i could not i cannot learn it like that and so and then i discovered that they say no you cannot pick up the accordion yourself it's something to do with customs 
it would be super complicated to release the accordion to me in Italy and so they said no the accordion is coming here and now I'm not dealing with the Toronto deal I'm dealing with this guy Keith in Burlington and so I thought since I'm not going to Italy and I cannot learn language from like that without any grammar like they do it at the, this bubble.com uh, so I switched to German so now I switched to German and it's actually pretty nice because I was I was pretty good at the university but that was like 40 uh, 40 years ago but I still remember basic grammar you know I I do have uh, a good ability to learn languages but of course when you get older it, it's getting harder and harder and so I thought I'll just take the the path of least resistance because German at least it's something I I do remember and also one cool thing is that nowadays it's so easy to learn languages because you can get that content anywhere you can watch movies in that language right you can read news you know you can find some radios online for free there's so much content now which was not available when i was learning english it was super difficult to find original speakers speaking english so now german like uh, i can read news in german and that's what i did on google you know when you go to google news on your phone there's a setting in there it says show news in multiple languages and you, you check that box and it asks you what language you want to allow to show on your screen and uh, there's all, all major languages are there and so of course I, I have English and then I say wait a second Deutsch and then you can choose Deutsch or German not just from Germany but because it's they're slightly different right but you can choose uh, Schweizer Deutsch you know uh, German from Switzerland you can choose German from Österreich Austria and stuff like that so I chose show me German real German from Deutschland from Germany and so now sometimes I forget about that you know it is quite something I, I open up news and then all of a sudden one story is in English then two stories in German you know like the headlines I'm like wait a second <laughs> and then I remember oh because I registered for multiple languages so it's so cool and so that's what's happening oh and of course this this is what sparked my interest again in German is the the, the, the jacket you know the jacket over here everything is in German Jagdflieger Jagdflieger something like that I like German I think it's a cool language you know Anyway, so the plan today is um, I'm all ready. I printed out all the paperwork for tomorrow's visit to the consulate. And actually yesterday they showed there was a big protest uh, at the consulate where I'm supposed to be tomorrow. So I hope, I hope uh, I'm not going to run into any unpleasantness over there. Um, so just try to play it cool. And I'll say that, uh, you know, maybe I'm from South Africa or something. Where are you from, man? Uh, Johannesburg. And so the plan today is to drive south to the lake. Just like I showed you that uh, pier. There's a bunch of parks here near the lake now I'm closer to Toronto now this is Oakville right that video was about Burlington and so I'm gonna drive and just do a drive-by I'm gonna put the camera on my head and just do a show you Lakeshore like a very scenic nice drive on Lakeshore Drive past the lake and if I see some parking there uh, there's a bunch of parks there you can see the water so I'll just show you guys that okay sounds cool Again, happy Easter. After this, you won't see my happy face again. Because now we're switching to this bad boy over here. This is eight. Actually, eight is easier on your head because it's much lighter than nine that I'm recording with now. But I still have to finish this red sunrise. Man, I already feel full. So this is really... A lot of juice.
hot sitting inside. See that beep? That means that. And that sound means that my camera is starting, my dash cam, recording three streams. I can see myself. driving around trying to see what's open but over here actually all the restaurants are open turn right onto Wycroft Road I see now the brakes are I think the same as as they were Okay, so this is Burlock and QW is over there. So Toronto is this way, Burlington and my hotel are that way. And I'm looking at the price, and just like they said, this weekend the prices were going up by about five or eight cents. I probably should have filled up. Because I only have enough, I just over half a tank. <laughs> and I have 158 kilometers left. 100 miles. So this tank, like I, like I remember when I did a video about uh, the three top mods. And I said that once you install headers, yeah, you get more power, but you lose economy. But again, for me, it's not an issue. Because I don't daily drive this thing. I just like the performance, I like the sound. Continue for three kilometers. looking townhouses They're really nice yeah this is a, a rich area because we're getting closer and closer to the lake oh, man so 
these houses here these are not even standalone houses no these are but there's like two and a half feet between the houses like what kind of a living is that so you're lying in bed and you you sneeze and your next door neighbor will say you know bless you well of course i'm This is super nice. These are all like looks like brand new. You see there's a park here. Yeah, that's called Path Woods. See like these guys, it's so beautiful. Like you you can park your car somewhere there. I don't think there's a, even signs and you can you can bike here, you know, you can Roller blade. People are looking at me, which means they can hear my exhaust. Your speed, 51. Yes, sir. I know. Trust me. Was that a cop? watching a guy from California and he's freaking out with the, of course over there prices are super high on gas and this guy <laughs> he just bought a he just, he just bought a Hellcat but at least he didn't go with a red eye which is 700 what is it 70 uh, 70 uh, 770 horsepower which is totally crazy he went with a regular Hellcat but wide body scat uh, charger and this is uh, Lakeshore so I think this is a good area your destination is on the right go for a drive continue on Lakeshore Road west for four kilometers yeah this is really nice here so this was a good idea guys so the lake is all there See, people can walk, you can walk your dogs in here, it's so beautiful. And so yeah, this guy, hello there. Oh, I thought she wanted to flag me down. And so this guy just bought a Hellcat, and in a surprising move, he does another video where he says he's shopping for a daily driver so he just spent I don't know 85,000 US on a Hellcat but gas is too expensive and he doesn't want to put miles on it because then the car loses value fast right you know and so now he's looking for a daily driver and this guy is so cheap he went to shop for a used Toyota Camry with 30,000 miles like to me that's crazy that's like 50,000 kilometers you know I I would never buy a car with so many miles but he doesn't care and plus of course you know uh, wanted to say Italian um, Japanese cars are very reliable so there's nothing wrong with that but so I think over there he said uh, he found a deal the Carmax for 27,000 US. Oh, there's parking over there. Actually, you know what? I think I might go, I might stop here and uh, go for a walk, if I may. Because that's exactly what I was trying to find, I was trying to see. Story here with 
parking. Head southeast on West River Street toward Seneca Drive. Oh, I think it's free. At 100 meters, turn right onto Seneca Drive. Turn right onto Seneca Drive. Interesting. Yeah, and this this is exactly. I wanted to go to this park, but vehicles with trailers require a ticket. Uh huh. So only vehicles with trailers require a ticket. Battle is welcome. So basically, yeah, this is where people bring bring their boats and stuff like that. And this is actually, yeah, this is where I wanted to go, but I wasn't sure if I can find the parking. So this is called Bronte Harbor Park, Bronte Beach Park over there. So I want to go check it out. Go towards the water, and I don't think I have too much juice left my my batteries but I got my I brought my camera so we'll see what's going on Are you seeing this but now uh, I didn't I didn't take my 135 millimeter so I have to get closer so yeah that's what it's called Bronte Beach They're not afraid of people at all. She doesn't like the sound. All right. This is cool. Some ducks over there. The ones I saw the other day were pretty cool. I found the, um, you know, a couple of ducks, a couple of ducks uh, they were diving and uh, getting completely submerged and I, I saw that they were a bit unusual looking because they had uh, long tails and I searched online and I found that they actually called long tailed duck and I'm guessing they're using those tails for swimming underwater as a, a rudder uh -huh. so there's a park here it's pretty cool oh there's another parking now this is called This is called uh, Bronte Bluffs Park. Uh -huh. and it's all free. No vehicles with trailers. So unless you have a trailer, so you don't have to you don't have to pay. I wonder what a house like that costs, you know, to be right next to the lake. There's a marina over there with the boats. But yeah, that was a good 
some mosquitoes over here. So that was a good encounter with that swarm. Usually they're afraid to come that close, but this guy let me come in close and then he just didn't like, or she didn't like the loud shutter. My camera. Oh yeah, you can go that way, you can go right next to the water. Wow. And again, it's pretty clear. Shall we go there? There's another marine over there. There are more paths for runners and joggers. There's a small uh, uh, beacon house over there. Wow, this poor tree. There's these roots over here. You see, it's all open. Like many places, I, I find that it's, you know, you cannot come close to the water because it'll say private property. You know? Well, let's go check out that kind of like a mini island over there. Yeah, it's a bit chilly over here near the water. But I, I changed to my other coat it's less heavy <laughs> that leather jacket is still pretty heavy I see people are fishing from the pier over there lots of old trees oh it's like a beach in here okay roger that that island there's all rocks underneath I think all right I think I've seen I've seen enough taking pictures of some boats but not when they are on on stands
That's the backup alarm on the pickup truck. Hello there. Looks like these guys are not afraid of people either. Yeah, this is a nice, nice area. Well, I'm back in my car. Yeah, it's pretty chilly over there. So now, I just need to find my... I still have some little bit of juice left. Now I just need to find my hotel. Or, just as I hoped... Head west on West River Street toward Lakeshore Road West. There's a route on Lakeshore. So because I only did what, like, I don't know. But one mile on Lakeshore. three there's three screens in here it does not allow me to see okay finally when you click that button it flips to page three whereas performance pages is on what is that my air conditioning anyway so I still have a little bit of juice left Until, until it dies. Mississauga, Mississauga, Mississauga Street. Interesting. Differing spelling than usually. to Toronto it becomes a four lane four lane highway but here it's just a two lane I 
Focus to my left. Okay, see, here's another area where you can park. And this is called uh, Shell Park. Shell Park. To me, I never been here. Well, I've been here, but many years ago. So it's been so much development. I remember these ones. I think I remember they would be being offered these condos over here. I think it was like two hundred fifty thousand Canadian. <laughs> and I was like, man, that's too much. So now they're probably worth close to a million. Barlock Drive, that's how I came in. Barlock Drive. And I see a sign on the right, uh, Burlington. So we're leaving Oakville. And we're entering Burlington. sign on the right Burlington Chamber of Commerce it shows you companies Burlington official sign 183,500 residents oh, there's another parking area here you can walk near the water beautiful somewhere saying that Burlington was you know on that list best places to live at I don't remember what position but a few years back I remember it was like number one or number two like Ottawa the capital held the first place for many years in Canada I'm not sure why but it's clean, it's the seat of the government, so beautiful architecture, you know, old town, the river. And then Burlington somehow beat Ottawa, because it's a much smaller town. But it's like somewhere in the States, you know. See, you leave one town, Oakville, and you find yourself in Burlington. So it's pretty much all one town, but they had to draw the line somewhere, right? <laughs> I think in uh, Los Angeles, right? I think they have a lake shore. Lakeshore Drive or San Francisco somewhere there so we have the same here and this thing is pretty long so you can drive pretty much all the way from Burlington to Toronto and like I said then it becomes a four lane becomes a it's a real becomes a real highway divided These houses over here. What do you guys think? Three million? Four? Again, this is Canada, so everything is overpriced.
back north because my hotel is that way and probably this is where I'm gonna stop the tape so to speak just wanted to show you guys this beautiful Turn right onto Walker's Line, Walker's Lane. this beautiful neighborhood it just three kilometers to my hotel and then it's like 600 meters after after I turn on Harvester Road that's where my hotel is but it's all nice you see it's all clean lots of people with dogs hardly see any any people with cats no, you would think that you want to take your cat for a walk. No. The cat stays home. The dog comes out. It can be also a part of a house security strategy. You know? People don't want to show potential gangsters that they only have a cat in the house. right? They want to show them this huge monster dog that will eat you alive if you look at him funny. So yeah, good area, good e area, overpriced, no chance in hell I could afford to live here, ever. But it would be nice, so nice. Captain out, enjoy the rest of your weekend.